Becoming a remote worker isn't just about watching Netflix while moving your mouse to keep your computer from falling asleep. Yes, that means you, Richard. To become a high-performing remote worker and an invaluable candidate for remote companies, you need to be able to use a wide variety of tools that enable remote work. And same for companies wanting to enable a remote workforce. It's really important to understand which tools are gonna to be the ones that are important to foster collaboration and support. The problem? Different companies use different tools. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the most important categories of remote apps, give you some examples you might see in the wild, and prepare you to easily be able to adapt so you don't fall on your face and act like an idiot. Depending on your role, some of these tools will be more important than others. So consider what is most important in your specific situation. And I'm also gonna share the general collaborative apps that are used across most teams, no matter what your role is. Let's dive in and get started with team chat apps. These apps remind me of the AOL instant messaging days, except I'm not messaging strangers in chat rooms using a screen name like Who's Your Daddy 1045. Some examples of these tools would be Slack, Microsoft Teams, or Twist. Basically, they allow you to send an instant message asynchronously to another team member, post in a specific channel reserved for certain topics, or create threads of conversation that don't get lost in the email. It's generally thought of as an email replacement in circumstances since it's a higher bandwidth of communication, but the tough part about these is that they can be very distracting and you, know, you can get very expectant of quick responses. So you can get stuck in Slack instead of doing the deep work tasks that you might be better off prioritizing. Next up, task management or project management apps. A large portion of remote companies use a standardized app where their teams communicate about projects, especially when there are a vast number of tasks to be done and there's different teams involved. These are tools like Asana, Monday.com, Basecamp, Trello, ClickUp. Individuals can provide status updates in these apps. They can assign or delegate responsibilities. They can push the ball forward in a transparent way that everybody can see. The alternative is that everyone has their own individual to-do list that no no one else can see and that's like trying to bake an elaborate cake with someone else but you're both referencing different recipes. Let's move on to one of my personal favorites, whiteboarding and mind mapping software. Now I'm a very visual person, I have to see. I like to spatially organize information because if I don't, my brain might explode. Software is like Miro or Mural, try saying that five times fast, Miro, Mural, Miro, Mural, 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 Mural. These tools help you brainstorm remotely, simultaneously, without the waste of paper from thousands of post-it notes that are thrown away immediately after meetings and without everyone getting a contact high from inhaling solvents in a closed conference room. <laughs> Moving on to another important and underrated set of tools, screen recording software, which is best used for those situations where it's easier to show than to tell. Most notably, there's a software called Loom, which can be downloaded and used as a Chrome extension. Super easy. You can record your screen, you can do voiceovers, so you can show the work as you're doing it and when that process is executed. Once it's done, then you can just send them the direct link to the Loom page, which it's already hosted. And Loom is like a good stalker. It tells you when someone's watched it. This takes us to another tool set focused on video, video conferencing apps. At the beginning of the pandemic, it was almost impossible to go online anywhere without seeing another poor soul who left their Zoom camera on while taking a dump. <laughs> Tragic. Since then, video conferencing has been a mainstay in our society, including grandmas defying the odds by learning how to download apps on their jitterbugs. And even though Zoom has become the Kleenex of video conferencing apps, there's still others like Google Meet, Skype, and FaceTime. But I also remember the good old days of remote work where we only had conference calls and you could literally lay down in bed and wait for your turn to speak. So don't forget, you can just and call somebody. Not everything has to be on video, seriously. Let's go from the most invasive one on this list to the ones preventing invasion, security tools. I'm only gonna talk about two different types here. Those are VPNs and password managers. VPNs are essentially internet condoms, also known as virtual private networks. It's always recommended to use one when you're receiving Wi-Fi from an unsecured network connection. It prevents people from accessing or stealing your personal information and browser history, which I know you wanna keep a secret. And say that you're using a company laptop, it's really important to them that you keep the organizational information safe. Some of the popular ones are CyberGhost, Nord, ExpressVPN, but they are there are so many of these now and they charge like two bucks a month or something that is insanely affordable. Then password managers. I don't even remember how the 
I used to remember passwords without using LastPass, which is the one that I use. It helps me create, encrypt, and store complex passwords in one place. So one, I'm not repeating the same password and I'm using ones that are really highly secure. And then two, I'm encrypting them and making it also easier for me. So when I'm at a login screen, I can automatically enter my information basically in one click, which is incredibly convenient. But if anyone gets that master password, I'm screwed. Speaking of automation, let's talk about automation tools. There are some apps out there that are matchmakers of other apps. They're like your friend that's always trying to set you up on dates, but this matchmaker doesn't fail miserably. When two apps don't communicate with each other, they need a third party integration tool like Zapier or IFTTT, if this, then that, to create the connection. In the settings, you'll tell the automation tool what happens in these apps when various triggers occur, and it's especially helpful helpful for mundane, repetitive things that happen all the time in the business that don't really need a human oversight. Getting good at automation is going to continue to be a huge skill set for anyone who wants to develop skills as a remote worker and as tech gets more and more advanced. Let's jump into note taking apps. There are a lot of tools out there to help you take notes, organize them and integrate them with other applications. I'm personally a addicted to Evernote. I use it every day. I use it to help me create my content. I use it to create templates for certain processes and tasks. I also love the web clipper. You can seamlessly click one button and save a site or a link or a picture in the app for later. For me, it's so much more than a note taking app. And I swear to God, this video is not sponsored by Evernote, but Evernote for real. Let's talk down to the last few and I'm gonna run through them real quick so you've got time tracking software. These are tools like Anco, Time Doctor, or Toggle. And this is, you know, this is really not something for everyone, but if you're in, you know, you're billing by the hour or you really want a detailed output of exactly how you spend your time, these tools can help you do that. I've used various time tracking software because I was curious how I was actually spending my time during the work days, but ultimately I decided I uh, personally didn't need to use them. Now, the last two I'm gonna lump together, Cloud Storage, and office suites. Cloud storage is basically the, uh, the technology and, and ability to share files with people, to store your own files in a place where you can get them in the cloud like Google Drive or Dropbox. And then office suites are like G Suite or Microsoft Office type products that they come with their own versions of spreadsheets, Word, documents, things like that. And with these, I tend to use Google because sharing via Google Docs is so easy. But uh, I'm interested in hearing what you think out there. There are absolutely two categories that I left out. There are tons of great applications that I didn't mention. So in the comments, let me know what in your job is absolutely necessary that you use that I missed. Make sure to like, subscribe, share with anybody who needs to see this video. And until next time, keep wandering. You're not lost.